Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Highmark Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A big one in the USL Championship tonight as the Riverhounds take on the Las Vegas Lights for the first time ever in the Steel City. It's all presented by Allegheny Health Network. Sean St. Jacques, the former Pittsburgh Riverhound, Corey Herzog, is with me. Let's take a look at the recent run of form for the Riverhounds. And, Corey, it's been really strong of late for Bob Lilly's group. Yeah, that win in New England is a great win for the club and for USL. So we'll see what they can bring it down to this game. And then hopefully on Wednesday get another huge win in the Open Cup. Backed it up with that Birmingham win as well. A rematch of the postseason a year ago. Pittsburgh wins that game. Big one tonight. Vegas has been tough on the road this season. We'll see how Bob Lilly's team does before Columbus crew come into town for a huge round of 16 tie in the Open Cup. Let's take a look at players to watch tonight for both teams. We begin with Danny Griffin, who just came back to the side a few weeks ago, and boy, did they miss him when he was gone for Pittsburgh. Yeah, scored probably one of the biggest goals in Pittsburgh history with that goal against New England, and he's just one of those guys that's always in the lineup, and he's always going to play well. 93rd consecutive appearance as a professional for Danny Griffin tonight. On the other side of things for Vegas, it's going to be Patello Foz, who's going to need to step up for them on the road. Yeah, and if Vegas wants to start getting some wins in those columns, they're going to need their forwards, their scores to score goals and get those three points on the road. Does have two goals this season, but Vegas has been inconsistent in front of goal. We'll see if that changes tonight in the Steel City. First ever trip for Vegas to Highmark. It has been one of the fortresses in the USL Championship in recent years, and we're excited for the kickoff as the Riverhounds take on the Vegas Lights, and it is coming up next. At AHN, we see you when everything's going great. And when that's not the case at all. We see you needing expert care every single day. And excited for all that's to come. At AHN, we see you. Let's go, come on. I love a new color and a new game. I like to switch it up, you know, wherever my mood takes me. I'm always just doing me. And today, I'm me loving the PA Lottery. The games have become a part of me. They make me happy, they get me excited. And when I wanna try something new, I'll just go to another, and then another, and another. There's a lot of love for the Pennsylvania Lottery. And when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why. At Lovesack, we design furniture for life. Real life. Messy life. Life that changes and brings us together for movie night. A life where batteries run down and get charged up again. Because now, Lovesack sectionals can be upgraded with Stealth Tech. And immersive surround sound by Harman Kardon hidden inside. Upgradable, washable, and guaranteed for life. Don't just hear it, feel it. At a Lovesack showroom near you. I can't wait to get to the Museum of Play. I will defeat the dreaded Donkey Kong, crush everyone in foosball, build an impenetrable dream house, explore the butterfly garden, uh, mightily conquer the dance lab, and when all are vanquished, you know I'd really like to see the fairy tale forest puppet show, because it's kind of my jam. To the museum! With so much to do and see, everyone loves the strong National Museum of Play in Rochester, New York. Tonight's match is presented by Allegheny Health Network, the official medical provider of the Pittsburgh Riverhounds SC. Sean St. Jacques, Corey Herzog back here with you moments away from kick as Pittsburgh gets set to take on Las Vegas Lights for the first time ever here in the Steel City, second ever meeting between these two, Vegas won it last season out west. Pittsburgh is hoping to get the revenge here tonight. And it's going to be a really interesting matchup as we take a look at the starting lineups. Corey brought to you by Armina Stone. Isidro Sanchez is starting 11 for Vegas is looking like this. Yeah, and you see Zach Carroll back there being the captain, being the leader that he is. And hopefully he can lead his team to a win against a really good Pittsburgh team tonight. Six road games so far this season for Vegas. Five of them have ended in draws. No wins yet for Vegas, but on the road, and Bob Lilly told us this earlier this week, very difficult to deal with. Bob Lilly has to cope with the Open Cup, a big game coming up 
next time out, but he's got a very strong 11 out tonight. Yeah, and Bob Lilly's always going to put his strong 11 out, and it's always going to be tough to score against his back five, sometimes back eight blocks. So it'll be interesting to see what Vegas can do with not scoring as many goals. Hopefully they can open up the gates tonight. Albert Dequa has his number nine. It's the same number of the amount of goals he scored so far this season. He is the Golden Boot winner so far. Keys to the game are brought to you by Premium Light Lager that embodies all things black and gold. I see light. Corey, we start with Pittsburgh. Yeah, and Pittsburgh coming off that huge win in New England, knowing they're going to be playing Columbus on Wednesday. What are they going to do in this game? Come down to earth, get your three points. You are playing a team that at home you should pick up three points. So it'll be interesting how they do that. And for Vegas, it's going to be about getting off to the right start on the road. Yeah, Vegas needs to get, get on the ball, get the attack going quickly, try to get Pittsburgh on the heels and get an early goal. Vegas in their whites with the light blue trim kick us off. And we are off and running from the Steel City Highmark Stadium on another big night for the Riverhounds. Hosts a big time matchup. First ever time Vegas has made the trip to the east to take on the Riverhounds. And we are underway. Pittsburgh in their black and yellows with the stripes across the front. We are expecting a really entertaining contest tonight here by the Allegheny. Sean St. Jacques, Corey Herzog, happy to have you with us. Vegas won the meeting last year in Vegas by a goal to nil. So Pittsburgh and Bob Lilly are hoping for a little bit of retribution this time around. And of course, as everybody knows that follows this league, Highmark is one of the fortresses. It's always difficult to come here and get a win, especially under Bob Lilly's tutelage. Vegas does have quite a task in front of them tonight. Early touch forward here into the path of Edward Kizza. Challenge comes in there, referee does blow his whistle. Junior Etu is brought down, an early yellow card here does come out. It's a free kick for the Riverhounds, and Emmanuel Ledesma has his name taken inside of a minute and a half here. It's a very early yellow for Vegas right there. It's gonna change the game for him one minute into the game, so it'll be interesting to see how that does change his game. Doesn't look much like a yellow there, though. Pretty early. Austin Saney is our center official tonight. He said, really, because yeah, it's so early in the game as well, maybe just a foul, not a yellow. Yeah. Do you concur? I agree. You see the replay there. You, He does get the ball. Player kind of makes it look like it, so I think the ref fell for that a little bit early in the game. Good season so far for Bob Lilly and his group. Of course, they pick up the marquee win in New England over Bruce Arena's revolution. Asked him about the significance of it, and I mean, you know Bob Lilly as well as I do. We kind of expected this kind of an answer, but he said, yeah, listen, it's great. We knocked off a big team. We have another game coming up on Saturday. That's basically what he told us <laughs> earlier this week. It's kind of the status quo there from Bob Lilly. Knows there's big things ahead including that game against Columbus, but of course they have to take care of business here tonight first. Yeah, and that game against Columbus is gonna be huge for the organization and for USL, but tonight's the night where they need to come back to, not back down to earth, but come here, focus on this game against Vegas, and then worry about Wednesday. One of the things that Bob Lilly talked to us about was the fact that if you drop points this early in the season, doesn't matter who you're playing, you can't always get those points back. It's why this game is so important for Pittsburgh who want to be here in the postseason at the end of the campaign. That's why I got to take care of business in the league. And he said, especially at home, it doesn't matter what's going on, other competitions. These are the games you have to win if you want to get to where you want to be at the end of the season. Yeah, and in playing in this league for so many years, you kind of do forget about the early points that you do drop. And at the end of the year, those are the points that matter. So this is very important for Pittsburgh and for Vegas to get the points that they deserve. And it's the second time these two have tangled in USL championship play. April 16th of last year was the prior meeting. Danny Trejo scored the winning goal in a 1-0 win for Vegas. This year, Vegas has not won a game yet. But again, Bob Lilly talked to us about the fact that any team that goes on the road, no matter what form you're in, it gets five results, five draws, mind you, but five results nonetheless is certainly capable of doing it again here tonight. 
For sure, and that's tough in the USL to go on the road and get points. And considering they haven't won a game with five draws in the first six on the road, that's eventually going to equal to winning a game in points and all that. But they need to start getting in the win column and moving up the table. One thing that Bob Lilly mentioned on the back end of that was, he said, I took the guys aside and said, do you want to be the team that lets them off the hook? You want to be the team that gives them their first win of the season? And he said, our guys are ready to go. They don't want that. They want to make sure they stay in their really good form in the league and in the Open Cup. And we'll see how that plays out here tonight at Highmark. Good crowd on hand, as always here. River Hounds are always well supported at Highmark. It's one of the reasons why this place is so tough for opponents to come. As Leo Diaz corrals it for Vegas, and the lights reset. Two-one win for Pittsburgh last time out against the Birmingham Legion, the team they knocked out in the playoffs last season. Albert Dequa had a brace. It's on the run here. Kizza looks for him. Burke Failing's in support. Failing crosses it into the middle. Decent ball. It's flicked on. And out of play it goes for a Riverhounds corner. And that's a good play by Pittsburgh. Get the ball wide. Dequa made a great run, opening the space out wide. Got it out wide. Good cross. Unlucky not to get the finish, but good start from Pittsburgh. Dequa was there in the spot, but good defensive play by Lodge. And Marcelo Lodge gets a crucial touch onto this, like you said, Corey, with Kizza lurking in the middle. In the end, it looks like Vegas gets to reset instead. Diaz is able to make a quick catch off the short corner that Cornardo Forbes took. And the set piece didn't amount to much for the River Hounds in the end. That's a foul, free kick. It's gonna go Las Vegas' way here. A chance for the visitors to finally get a foothold in the game. It's been a lot of Pittsburgh possession in the early minutes here. Maybe a chance here for Isidro Sanchez's group to create something. And when you're traveling on the road, coming across country, set pieces are very important defensively and now attacking. They did well in the corner. Let's see what they can do attacking wise because these are the these are the goals that you can get on the road trips. And one of the reasons that Coach Sanchez's group has struggled this season has been because of their lack of goals in general. They've been inconsistent in that category. From the set piece, it's headed towards failing, and then the shot does come in, but it is sent soaring over the top and out of play for a goal kick on the attempt from Carlton. And you can see they're trying to hit Zach Carroll on the back post. Big guy in the back, trying to get it to the other big guy to try to head it across, but not executed to perfection there. Well, Cedro Sanchez's group has done well on the road, but again, looking for that elusive first victory that could really jumpstart the campaign. Again, the West is still very much there for movement in the early parts of the season here, as it always is. I mean, last year, if at last year's any indication, it came down to the final two days and everyone was still in it. So plenty of time for Vegas, but again, the results do have to come. And with one, one goal here, one win here, it could change the entire season with confidence, with relationships on the field. One goal, one confidence, one game, and three points can change a whole year. Ushu's challenge here does lead to a free kick for Pittsburgh. Kizza was dragged down on the edge of the penalty area. And this is in a good spot for the Riverhounds. Look at the replay there showing you the foul. Just getting your body in between the ball and the man. Smart play. Earns his team a foul in a dangerous spot. Langston Blackstock is over this. So is Canardo Forbes. League's all-time leader in assists. Pittsburgh's all-time leader in assists. Blackstock looks poised here. He does take it. It's not a bad effort, but it does curl over the top of Diaz's goal. You can see what he's trying to do there, trying to catch the keeper sleeping a little bit, going to the keeper's strong side, seeing if he's cheating. I think the keeper might have it covered, but unlucky. Well, nine times out of ten, you'd bet your money on Forbes taking a free kick there, but it wasn't a bad effort at all from Blackstock. Just couldn't quite put it on target. Carlton is harried, loses possession out for Kizza. Still Kizza. It was poked away from him by Ian Bila. Forbes resets. Yeah. 
Dos Santos. Forced all the way back to Ordonez. Bob Lilly told us, wasn't sure if Arturo Ordonez was going to start tonight, but he's in there. Having to manage some minutes for Pittsburgh as the Riverhounds do win a free kick here. It's always the tough part, right? Balancing Open Cup with the league, not just for MLS teams, but for USL Championship teams as well. I did say, you know, Robbie Mertz not going to play, at least from the start tonight. He, someone they're trying to rest in that midfield as well. And depending on what the scoreline is in the latter stages, Bob Lilly might have a peek over at his bench and see if he can make some alterations to save some guys some minutes. Keep an eye on that as the game goes on. Here's failing. And to back you up on that, that was probably a game plan for Pittsburgh. Get on them early, get the lead, try to go one, two up at halftime, and then you'll be able to hopefully rest some players and then get into Wednesday. But Wednesday's gonna be a huge game for Pittsburgh, and not only am I excited, but the league, the, everybody in Pittsburgh. Failing. Decent ball in, too close to the goalkeeper in the end, and Diaz does scoop it up. And Forbes is right there. If he can just pick up his head and just slide Forbes in, Forbes is in one of the most dangerous spots in that between the post and the 18 right there to be able to get an assist. Oh, this is poked in behind. Dequa gets on the end of it for Pittsburgh, but Diaz beats him to the spot. And in the end, I think he was fouled as well, the goalkeeper. Dequa not sure why the decision has gone against him. Vegas does get to reset his thing nearly present Pittsburgh with a massive opportunity here. Huge opportunity that Deco needs to finish. It's a one-on-one -on -one in the first 10 minutes. I know he's not expecting the ball in behind by a Vegas player, but he needs to get on that, get that touch. He can dribble around the keeper or just set it up and slot it to one of the sides. Takes too big of a touch there. Little much excitement maybe coming into the game, getting a free shot like that, but you expect Deco to finish that with his nine goals and make it 10. Leader in the Golden Boot Race so far this season in the USL Championship. Nobody else for Pittsburgh has more than one goal this season, by the way. Four goal scorers for Pittsburgh this season. Mertz, Failing, and Forbes all have one. Dequa has nine for the Riverhounds. And if you want to go all competitions, you throw Danny Griffin in there. <laughs> And a few others in the Open Cup as well against Maryland as Carlton tries a sidewinder from quite some distance but does miss the target. It's a good idea trying to catch the keeper off. A little excited. The second shot outside the 18 like that, both off target, but I like the idea. Can't watch the match. Turn on Sirius XMFC 157, North America's only 24 7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesday nights at 7 Eastern, plus here live matches. From the USL, MLS, English Premier League, and more on Sirius XM FC 157 and the SXM app. Good bright start from Pittsburgh. A couple of opportunities, maybe quarter chances, not quite half chances for Vegas in this early start, but they're still trying to get a foothold into the game with the Riverhounds trying to run them down early on here. Carlton, good touch. Able to poke it over the top. Good defensive move there from Hogan to get a touch on that. Failing's in a little bit of trouble. Wade is in support to clear. And that's good from Vegas. Find those holes in front of the back four. Turn in at Carlton Kern. Tried to find the forward. Unfortunately, just not hit it well enough, but that's positive for Vegas to find those holes in between the midfield and defenders. Nine goals as a team this season. For Vegas again that's as many as Dequa has by himself it's the third fewest in the league this season so again just to reiterate the point Vegas at times have created chances but likes of Patello Faz and company have not always been able to take them as consistently as coach Sanchez would have wanted and if you're not going to score goals in this league you're not going to win very many games so if they want to start climbing up the table they need to start finishing those ch uh, chances and getting some confidence in those forwards this could be an opportunity here. I am Bila will take the throw just in front of Bob Lilly. Failing heads it away. Still not cleared. Patello Faz on a recycle. I am Bila gets it right back in. It nearly fell for Carlton. Crucial defensive touch for Pittsburgh. Sees them nearly clear it. Pass all the way back, and I am Bila tries to chest it down and control for the lights. Good pressure from Pittsburgh, and it's going to be forced all the way back here 
controlled by Zach Carroll. Again, three losses in the last five for Vegas, two draws. Again, they've been, some of them at least, pretty impressive just running through the draws at RGV, at Orange County, at Memphis, at San Antonio. Rather impressive, they just drew against Tulsa at home who they can play their cards right, will certainly be in the playoff mix in the East. So they've been getting good results, just no wins yet. I don't know if many teams will have those same results against the same five teams that Vegas has. So the potential is there for them to steal points on the road, to be able to get in that win column. So it'll be interesting to see what they can do at another good spot, Pittsburgh, then come away with a tie or better yet, a win. That San Antonio one is big in particular as that shot does curl wide of Waite's goal. Did it trickle out of play for a throw here? It may have, I think Pittsburgh is gonna have to reset here on the near side. And those are one of those chances that, it's not a great chance, but it's one of those chances that if he puts that on target, you don't know what's gonna happen. Could go in, a lot of confidence going into the 15th minute, up one nothing, but unfortunately it's going like Vegas this season right now, not falling for him right now. But if you're Vegas, you don't wanna keep trying. You keep shooting, that's the third one. One of them will eventually, hopefully go in. Blackstock is invited into the play here by Kizza. Stock needs some support here. He does get it. Good ball whipped in towards Dequa. And Diaz rises higher to catch. Dequa saying he went to the little lower because he's going near post run. I think he's thinking he's going back post. Good near post run there. If he can get that ball a little whipped, head height, just a little touch, and he has one nothing Dequa with 10 goals. And Corey, just to put the bow on the road Vegas point here, that San Antonio result turned quite a few heads. It certainly turned Bob Lilly's head as well when we talked with him about it earlier this week. So Vegas is certainly capable. Not many go to San Antonio and get anything. So Vegas has had those results where you go, they can have something up their sleeves this season, but they're not able to turn those draws into wins. That's where it can come back to get you as Vegas does concede a free kick here right at midfield. Yeah, not many teams go into San Antonio coming out with one point. So there is positive points for Vegas to build off of. And like we said, most teams don't come into Pittsburgh and get points. And this is going to be a good test for them to see. They just need to win those games at home or maybe win those chances where there is that chance to win the game. They need to take control of that. Failing trying to continue the play on this near side, just in front of Isidro Sanchez. It's going to be a throw-in for his boys here. Failing wins it right back for the Riverhounds. Forbes controls. Langston Blackstock, who took game from a free kick earlier, couldn't quite hit the target on a nice curling effort. And Hogan play it further back here for Arturo Ordonez. Forbes, who just turned 35 years old on Monday, continues the play for Pittsburgh. Great cross into the middle. Cleared out nicely by Carroll, but only as far as Dos Santos. Leonardo Forbes has been with Bob Lilly since his Rochester days as well. So those two have been attached at the hip for quite some time. Quite a brain trust there, Forbes and Lilly. Not gonna get much better than that. Bob Lilly won the USL Cup back in 2015 with the Rhinos. Goes down the line here for Griffin. Griffin pokes it into the penalty area and Vegas clears it out for a throw. Griffin, of course, scored the winning, winning goal in New England. Of course, he's from Connecticut, Danny Griffin originally. Pokes this ball centrally. No one in black and yellow there to really attack it. Blackstock reads it and lets it go back out for a throw. And Bob Lilly maybe had that reaction when we asked him about the New England result. Just a bit, you know, it was great. He said, love that we got it done. It's a big moment, but we have many more big moments ahead of us is kind of what he told us. And it's pretty par for the course. Bob Lilly never satisfied, even when he pulls off a historic cup set yeah, in the well, Open Cup. He's won so many games that yeah. they all come together now. But that was a huge win. And inside, I know he's feeling, he's loving that, but he doesn't want to show it because 
as we said, he wins games, that's what he does, he wins championships, and that's what he wants his players to play. Forbes, he really found Kizza, former New England player. Here's Failing. Failing get to the byline here. He crosses it into the middle. Took a deflection on the way through. Carlton tries to control it. It does, but Pittsburgh swarm it. Etu, Kizza. Failing has a few players to aim at. Griffin is one of them. And he flicked it on nearly for Dequa. And the offside flag is up. And I think Failing's touch there just leads him down a little bit. He takes the touch and it goes towards the sideline instead of taking it towards the goal to be able to. As you can see, his touch is outside here instead of inside. His hips are facing the other way and it's a tough ball, but unlucky by Griffin. And again, the offside flag did negate the challenge. It was the right idea for Pittsburgh. Griffin just came from an offside position to flick it on. Kizza was waiting for it. Deco actually was the player at the back post there if it fell all the way through. This is headed into a dangerous area. Deco was in pursuit. Crucial touch from Zach Carroll. And Diaz clears. And that's one thing that Zach Carroll is going to bring to you. Leadership, being able to read those balls. He might not be the fastest player, but he reads the situation very well. Able to get a toe poke there. Played with him in Reno. Plenty of games with him. And he's just one of those smart players that just understands the game, understands what he has to do, and that shows right there. Also seems to just read the game really well. Has those instincts that you can't always teach, right, to yeah. players? Yeah, 100%. And he has that with what he does also as being a leader for that team in the back four. Blackstock for Pittsburgh. He gets to the byline. Crossing it into the middle, it's pumped towards Kizza, and Edward Kizza scores. Well, Leo Diaz might want that one back for Vegas, but it's Eddie on the spot for the Riverhounds. Edward Kizza gives them the lead, and the Riverhounds are off and running at Highmark. Maybe a bit fortunate, but Pittsburgh won't care one bit. And it is Edward Kizza's first league goal of the season that puts Pittsburgh in front. And as a forward, when we tell you right place at the right time, it's perfect. It's unbelievable. Taking aggressive by Blackstock to get that cross in. You're not going to score goals if you don't get the chances, and he gets it. Diaz, unfortunately, not sure what he's doing. Needs to catch that or punch that out. But as a good forward would always say, if you're in the right spot at the right time, you're going to be getting your goal. And unfortunately for him, he gets that goal. Fifth different player in the league to score for Pittsburgh this season. Edward Kizza right where he needs to be. It drops very kindly for him. Riverhounds are in front, and Vegas have work to do here as we approach the midway point of the first half. And if you're Pittsburgh right now, you're going to want to try to get one early, get their heads down. Vegas. Hasn't won a game all year, going down one nothing early. Imagine going down 2 nothing real quick. Dequa leaves it for Griffin. This is where Pittsburgh can be very dangerous. Griffin plays it out wide here for Canardo Forbes. Blackstock, can he keep it in? He pokes it for Diaz. It did run out of play, and it's a goal kick. On the other side, if you're Vegas, you want to get through the next five, 10 minutes. You want to try to create something Try to get that confidence up a little bit. Try to create that chance that hopefully you can finish. And this is the trouble as well, of course, when there's an inconsistency in goal scoring for a team and you fall behind on the road. Are you going to be able to come back? That's what's going to be tasked here for Cedro Sanchez and his group. Failing. Lovely touch. Dequa has two players over to his left. He slows it down. Etu loses out. It's a clean challenge. Vegas come out with it here. Ledesma. Still Ledesma. Can he wait too long to find a teammate in the end? It's a wild, well shot, pass, whatever. Regardless, it goes out of play. And you can see the relationships in Vegas just aren't clicking right now. I'm not sure what everybody's going to do. Not sure what runs to do. We're not sure what passes to do. I'm telling you, that one goal will get that confidence and relationship back. It was a good run initially from Emmanuel Ledesma. Nothing came of it. Dequa was looking for a free kick. It didn't come. 
Maybe it did. Referee does play advantage for Pittsburgh. Instead of giving the free kick, Riverhounds keep possession. Blackstock down the line for Kizza. It does stay in play. Kizza for Forbes. Carlton tries to harry him. Forbes trying to find failing, and maybe a failing had stuck with that. He could have gotten on the end of it. Ryan Bila fell, and luckily for him, from his perspective, the failing, we should say the cross for failing, didn't find its way to him. Yeah, he's just, he just knows the defender was going to get there, stopped his run, and unfortunately the defender slipped. If he would have kept going, it would have been in, but not the best ball from Forbes, but even when he does play balls, they're dangerous. At two. Nice little touch by Griffin, out wide here again for failing. Does have a goal to his name so far this season. He's lofted forward into the path of Griffin. It's headed back towards Kizza and then it ricochets for Diaz. You can see there, top left of your screen. 62 degrees, a bit cloudy here in the Steel City, but the sun has poked through at high mark. Another good atmosphere in Pittsburgh. It's a sports town. If there's a game going on somewhere, there's going to be good support. The Riverhounds are no exception. Yeah, I played my two years in Pittsburgh. The fans are great, always coming out to the games, always having fun. It was a lot of fun playing there. So it's a good experience, definitely at Highmark Stadium. I am Bila. Carlton kept that alive. And Ledesma drags it wide of Jamali Waite's goal. That's a little bit better from the visitors here. Much better, and they're finding those holes in between the defenders and the midfielders. And that's where they're getting dangerous spots. So they need to keep finding Carlton in there, being able to turn, and then maybe one time being able to slip a forward. They've had three, four shots outside the box. Maybe now it's time to fake a shot, slip a forward in, and get a goal. Wait, of course, played with the Jamaican national team earlier this season in the CONCACAF Nations League against Mexico. Jamaica got a result in that game as well. Big feather in the cap for Jamali Wait and the Jamaican national team. Taking on one of the big names in CONCACAF from a national team perspective. Can Vegas respond after the early goal from Edward Kizza six minutes ago? That put Pittsburgh in front. Off a bit of a miscue from Leo Diaz. Well, that's what you want to see from Vegas, finding those holes. Unfortunately, it rolled under his foot. Oh, yeah, lovely Dequa. dummy there from Forbes. He gets it back from Dequa. And then Forbes slips on the ball. Rare mistake from him. And the attack does break down. Two uncharacteristic mistakes there, one from Vegas and then one from Mr. Assist himself. Yeah, it's lucky he didn't hurt much there. It looked ugly, but gets up from that, unfortunate. Everybody's done that in their career at least once or twice. It was a gorgeous dummy from <laughs> Forbes that led to that. Donez cuts it out there. Vegas will reset on this near side. towards the edge of the penalty area. Good challenge from Ordonez. Ayambila wins it back. Look forward again. Again, Pittsburgh have the answer. That's a high challenge. Referee plays advantage here for Vegas. Carlton, Matello Faz goes for goal. It takes a deflection. Carlton drags it wide as Pittsburgh didn't definitively deal with it on the edge of the penalty area. Vegas are getting those chances, but unfortunately not any of them are going on target. If you can get that on target, maybe there's a save. Maybe there's a rebound that a forward can finish. Ends up ping-ponging around. Good fortune it fell for Carlton. Like you said, Corey couldn't put it on target. From a tough angle to score from, but certainly not one to put on target. Yeah, he's trying to get too perfect and try to put it in the corner. Sometimes the best goals, you're just striking it on goal, and unfortunately, they haven't hit the target tonight, but it's good 
it's good from Vegas, building a little bit of confidence there, but unfortunately, you can't score if it's not on target. Carlton, I guess, readjusting his shin guards in one of his boots here at the end of the sequence. Gives, I guess, both teams a chance to take a bit of a deep breath. But it's a better spell from Vegas. You talked about them getting off to a good start. They didn't, but they've recovered. Yeah, and they had those chances earlier in the game to get off to that good start. And then, unfortunate, a keeper mistake, maybe punching it, maybe not catching it. But you don't see Vegas putting their head down. They're still going. They're still creating those chances. And hopefully one of them can fall for them. Cleared by Carroll. Well, not definitively. The next goal in this game is going to be huge. If it's Pittsburgh, it's going to be great for them to go in at halftime, 2-0, maybe even more. If it's Vegas, you're going in at 1-1. A lot of confidence going into being in Pittsburgh, going in at 1-1. Coming back from down. Failing. Just about controlled it. Works for space. Has support with Canardo Forbes. Failing. Good ball into the back post, and it's a thumping header. Edward Kiza scores again. Hadn't scored in the league all season, but Edward Kiza has a brace just past the half an hour mark here in Pittsburgh. And just when it looked like Vegas had a chance to get back on level terms, the Riverhounds double their lead. What most people aren't going to notice here is what's very important is Forbes' pass back. He doesn't smash it in where he takes the touch. He plays it off perfect so he can hit it one time. All the runs in the box are on time, and that's what you want. You want one forward going near post. You want one ending up on the penalty spot. That's exactly what you're going to get. And unfortunately for Vegas now, it's 2-0, and it's going to be tough for them to come back now. Two goals in 10 minutes for Edward Kizza. And the Riverhounds roar into a two-goal lead. If Forbes plays that back a little hard and he has to take the touch, all the runs are off. So unbelievable, he's not going to get the assist, but that's what you want from Forbes, and that's what you're going to get from Forbes. Well, Bob Lilly talked to us about the hockey assist a couple of times this week. That's why Canardo Forbes is in there. Even when he doesn't get an assist, he tends to be a part of it. And the Riverhounds have been very clinical in this first half. Edward Kizza has been very clinical in this first half for Pittsburgh. And that's how Vegas season is going. They're getting the chances. They're able to be able to get in the box, get those chances. But unfortunate, nothing's on target. They're not scoring. So right now, it's very important for Vegas not to put their head down because it could get ugly if they do. It was a lovely ball in from Burke failing as well. On a plate for Kizza. Vegas not reacting there. It was lovely skill from Deke. Had plenty of time on the ball. This is where it could potentially get out of hand if Vegas aren't too careful, but it's a good challenge from Carlton. Kind of lofted into the penalty area. Ooh, not quite dealt with by Dos Santos initially, but he does get away with one there and clears it. Could have fallen into a tough spot for him, but he does clear it away. And you can see Pittsburgh's buzzing around. They're first to get on the balls. They're first to win the 50-50 balls. Vegas needs to step it up here a little bit and try to get something before half. Say 2 0 is the most precarious scoreline in the beautiful game. Can Vegas get one back? I am Beeler's ball in's very good. Pittsburgh were late to react that time, but they do clear it. And you can see the confidence isn't there for Vegas. He could have hit that first time. Fortunately, he's not confident, tries to take a touch. Not the best touch that you could take, and he doesn't even get a shot off. So we need to, but what they did do well is get in between. They're finding those holes in between the defenders, and that's where they're getting their chances. They need to keep doing that. I saw you almost take it for him first time <laughs> over to my right here. Yeah, I get into the game here a little bit, I'm missing it a lot. <laughs> Here's Griffin. Leaves it for Blackstock. With Pittsburgh seemingly humming here at the moment. And he's sent forward down the side. Will this be brought back? Yes, it will. It is a free kick for the Riverhounds. And that's just frustration from a forward, not getting the goals, not getting the chances that he wants. He's just trying to get into the game, and unfortunately, his frustration comes out there. We haven't mentioned Kubo Torres a ton, have we, in this first half? Always a threat. 
for Vegas, but number 99 hasn't really had too many touches of note in this first half, and I think that's a credit to the always stingy defense that Bob Lilly provides for this Riverhounds group. And as a forward, when you're not getting the ball, you're not finding the chances, what you really want to work on is your discipline. You don't want to drop into the midfield, clog up that space. You want to keep doing what you know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to score goals. You're supposed to be in the box. You don't want to drop in and try to recreate your game. You can just see Vegas just reacting, just trying to figure out where the ball is going to be. Ooh, Diaz needed to be careful there. Palmed it on the edge of his penalty area. Did well not to handle it outside of the penalty area. Does clear it with Dequa lurking, looking for his 10th goal of the season. Both goals have been scored by Edward Kizza, his first two goals of the season in the USL Championship. Second leading goal scorer on Pittsburgh with two. Good call. <laughs> Dos Santos, plenty of space here for Dequa. Forbes has failing in support. Dequa wants it, Dequa gets it. Forbes tries to keep it alive. It's headed forward by Etu into the referee, who allows play to continue there. Maybe could have stopped it because he did impede the progress there one way or the other. Blackstock got it back off a lovely layoff from Griffin and sends it over the top of Diaz's goal. You can see the difference in the attacking thirds on each team. You can see Pittsburgh understanding where everything's going. It's like fluid. It's just, I play you, you play me, here we go. Vegas, they're not really sure what's going on with their attacking third. Kind of confused a little bit. There was this awkward moment earlier from Diaz. Of course, he dropped the ball into Kiza's path that led to the first goal. That time he was able to avoid, potentially giving away a free kick there on the edge of his own penalty area. Your first key to the game, Corey, was business as usual for Pittsburgh. That's what it's been so far for the bulk of this first half. It's as, it's as if they don't have a big round of 16 cup tie coming up. They're really playing like this is a very important game. It's because it is, of course. Yeah, of course, and that's what Bob Lilly's going to give you. Oh, and now Deke was in behind here. Goes for goal and sends it over the top. Big chance there for Pittsburgh to really establish their dominance, but Dequa misses the chance. And Deco could have two goals in this first half here, but unfortunately for his first touch, maybe on this one his second touch doesn't go towards the goal. As you see, it goes outside of the goal. As soon as you get outside that, maybe cut it back onto your left foot, bend it back post. But unfortunately his touch does go too far out wide, and he's not able to get anything on target. Well, he can't score every time, Albert Dequa. Two really good chances, like you said, Corey, but this has been the one that's done the damage for Pittsburgh in the first half. Two goals within a 10 minute span. As the Riverhounds in the box seat for three points so far. And if you're a good forward like Dequoy is, you're just gonna keep rolling with it. You're getting your chances. You're gonna finish one of them. He knows that. He has nine goals this year. He's gonna keep battling and keep getting those chances himself. Dequa, it looks like he's penalized here. It is a Vegas free kick. Samulash gets back to his feet after getting involved in that tangled mess in the middle. Vegas can reset, trying to get a foothold back into the game. Bob Lilly would love another goal here going into halftime, 3 0 with the huge game on Wednesday against Columbus. So, focus on Pittsburgh really going after him right now in the last five, six minutes with stoppage time. Another errant pass is given away. Kizza does well to get back on the ball. Etu plays Kizza in behind. Deke was in support. Balls for Blackstock. Junior Etu trying to get it back through the middle. He recovers it for failing. Failing for Dequa. Griffin, let's fly! And misses the target. Anytime Pittsburgh's taken aim from Quite some distance out, they've come close to putting it on target. But this one goes over the top. And he's done well to keep it low, not as low as you want, but you can just see the confidence coming off every single attacking player at the Pittsburgh. Everybody's feeling it, everybody's playing, just sharing the ball and getting the chances that they like. Another 
battle for it in the midfield. Ayambila beaten to it by Forbes. Griffin helped out. Even the bouncers are going for Pittsburgh this half. Dos Santos. At two. Stays with it. Another bounce that goes Pittsburgh's way. Couldn't find Kizza. It's hit high into the air. And Leo Diaz does make the catch. An awkward spot. Even he was shaking his head after that odd sequence. Well, they say you, they, you make your own luck. Pittsburgh's certainly done that in the first half. And, and like you said, those weird little nicks and bumps and bounces went Pittsburgh's way. It nearly created a chance for Kizza. And I've been on both sides. I've been in Pittsburgh's side, I've been on Vegas' side. And you do feel that as a player. If you're not connecting with your team very well and not getting the ball where you want it, you feel like those bounces are going the other way. And this is a huge set piece for Vegas to maybe get a cheap goal here. Five minutes left in the first half. Look for Carroll around back as they tried last time. Ledesma, who's been active for Vegas in this first half. And he picks somebody out in white. Ledesma's ball in. Wait, he's able to make the catch. Some battling going on there in the penalty area. It wasn't a bad ball from Ledesma, just too close to the goalkeeper as the referee has stopped the play here, it looks like. Ooh, and maybe it's Kubo Torres here that needs to be looked at. Not entirely sure. Look at the last sequence here. Ooh, Torres on the left side of the screen may have been nicked in some way. Maybe an elbow was thrown, couldn't quite tell. He's the one that's been brought to the side here. And it is because he had some blood from potentially an elbow in the penalty area there. Austin Saini, our center official, just went over to have a check on him. And Kubo Torres is being evaluated by the medical staff for Vegas. So for the time being, the lights will be down to 10 while Kubo Torres is evaluated. Mike's Beer Bar isn't only the home to the famous steak on a stone, but also the official watch party location of your Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Meet me at Mike's. I'm sure they're bouncing around over there right now. Two goals to the good, their Riverhounds are right now. Yeah, if you're a Pittsburgh fan, you're, you're happy with what you're seeing. You're comfortable with this game. Bounces are going your way. Chances are going your way. You just don't, like you said, 2 nothing's a very dangerous score. You don't want Vegas, if you're Pittsburgh, to get back into this on a goal before half. And if you're Vegas, you don't want. Ooh, chance here for Griffin. He's in behind. Oh, he's missed it. Danny Griffin, who won it against New England in New England, could have put Pittsburgh in pole position here, but he's missed the target. And you can see what he does here. He opens up his hips, trying to go back post. Unfortunately, doesn't get the bend that he wants on it. Great opportunity to go up 3-0 right before half, and he's going to want that one back. But still, Pittsburgh's creating those chances. They're looking dangerous. It could be 3-0 before halftime. Danny Griffin did score for Huntsville City in MLS Next Pro earlier this season and has scored in the Open Cup since he's returned to Pittsburgh. That was a big opportunity to score in the league. You can see Pittsburgh winning every aerial ball, every second ball, everything is just going to Pittsburgh. It falls for Griffin. Griffin's in behind. Deke was up there with him. Kizza joins in. Griffin goes down. Referee looks away, nothing doing. Pittsburgh trying to win it back. Good pressure from Blackstock. Vegas survive again, but they do give the ball back. And it's a good no call by the ref there. He was looking for the contact. Thought maybe early on he could have played that first time. Now Kiz is in again, looking for the hat trick. Diaz palms in away out for a corner. It seems like every time Vegas think they're safe, they're not. And they have a set piece to deal with here. Yeah, with the first replay, you see him trying to get the contact here. He goes down very soft. You're going to want that as a forward, but you know you're not going to get that one. 
Pittsburgh looking dangerous. Every ball in behind is either a breakaway or a two-on-one. Vegas is going to have to get into halftime, hopefully down 2 nothing, and talk about what they need to work on. Because every ball, even if it's a hopeful ball, they're getting in behind. Vegas have this corner to deal with first. In by Forbes. Flicked on at the near post. Nobody in black and yellow to get an additional touch. Headed back in, though. An overhead kick goes wide of the goal. Well, nearly a headline writer there, Arturo Ordonez. Went for the spectacular, but he missed the target. And I think that's a defender bicycle kick right there. Not much <laughs> athleticism going into it, but it's a good idea. It's a dream goal, but didn't get the ball up high enough to be able to do that. I'll say better than most, though. Got decent contact on it, to be fair to Arturo yeah, de Ordonez. Decent contact for sure. Now then, Matello Faz trying to find some space. Was flicked on by Ledesma, who, to be fair to him, has had a decent half, but things really come Davis's way in generals. We're into two added minutes at the end of a Pittsburgh-dominated first half. And they add on here, the Riverhounds. Griffin resets for Blackstock and company. Santos is in support. Back for Griffin. Ordonez. This is Hogan. Kizza who scored both goals for Pittsburgh. Lovely ball from Forbes, failing. Can he keep it in? No, he can't. Out it goes for a goal kick. Thought Forbes maybe could play in his end there with the hips. Didn't see it, maybe, saw, thought the falling ball was better. But it's a, every time Pittsburgh gets in that final third, they look dangerous. They look like they're going to score a goal, unlike Vegas, who just haven't found their way yet. You can see it in the keeper's reaction right now. Just keep your head up, get through it, get to halftime. Well, Vegas have gotten results on the road this season, but I can't remember the last time I've seen them want halftime more than they do right now. The Riverhounds have roared in this first 45-minute stretch. And they're not done yet. Forbes trying to get it back for Dequa. 35 seconds left for Vegas to try and get this to halftime. Maybe a last chance here to make it interesting. Carlton dropped down, but it's a fair challenge from Atu. Pittsburgh control once more. Forbes down the line. Kizza's on a hat trick, and he's fouled. Not only is he scoring goals, he's holding up the ball, keeping it, getting those fouls that a big forward needs to do for his team. Give his time, give his defenders rest, get that big body in between the ball and the man, and just doing well there. Well, Bob Lilly said he didn't want to let Vegas off the hook, didn't want to be the team that gives them their first win of the season. They have been more than up for it so far, Pittsburgh tonight. Kizza has two goals. Pittsburgh have a 2-0 lead. Two minutes are up into this first half. Jamali Waite is going to send this forward for the Riverhounds. And that's how the half ends here at Highmark. Just what the Riverhounds would have wanted in this first half against Vegas, a team that's been tough to deal with when they go on the road this season. But Edward Kizza scoring his first two league goals of the season have Pittsburgh in front by two goals to nil at the half, Corey. Yeah, and it's a good first half from Pittsburgh. If you're a Pittsburgh fan, if you're Bob Lilly, that's what you want to see. 2 nothing going into halftime. Get in maybe some of your players that you want out for Wednesday, but it's a good half by Pittsburgh right there. Certainly a big 45 minutes coming up for Vegas. Isidro Sanchez and company have plenty to talk about, but it's been Edward Kizza and the Riverhounds that have been at the center stage here at Highmark once again, leading by two goals to nil. Bob Lilly's group on their way to three points, but adjustments are needed for Vegas at the halftime break. Riverhounds in control, big 45 minutes to come. 2-0, Hounds in front at the half.
Cheer on the Riverhounds all season long at Mike's Beer Bar, Pittsburgh's home for local beer. With 21 TVs, over 300 local beers, and amazing food, Mike's is the place to be. Tell your friends to meet me at Mike's, Federal Street, right across from PNC Park. Pittsburgh, stop breathing dirty air and contaminants trapped in your home's air ducts and dryer vents. Call Sears Air Duct and Carpet Cleaning or go to SearsClean.com. Our professionals will clean and disinfect your home's air ducts with powerful high-pressure vacuum equipment. That cleans the air your family breathes. We love our pets, but their hair and dander get trapped in your air ducts and their odors in your carpets and on upholstery. Sears can clean it away. Call Sears Air Duct and Carpet Cleaning for a healthier home. Go to SearsClean.com. My feet hurt so bad in the morning, I couldn't even put my feet on the floor. So I had to start engineering my own arch support. So I got that, then I put this in there, and this one. Finally, before I added another one of these in, I went to Good Feet, and they gave me this. So I built all this together to engineer a solution to my pain. And if I'd have just gone to Good Feet, I'd have been better off in the first place. Good Feet Arch Supports, engineered for pain relief, personally fitted for you. Sean St. Jacques, Corey Herzog back with you at the break here at Highmark. Pittsburgh in front of Las Vegas by two Edward Kizza goals to nil. Riverhounds in pole position for three points at the half, but still a big 45 minutes to come for Bob Lilly and for Cedro Martinez, I should say Cedro Sanchez's respective groups. Let's take a look at this recent run of form once again for Pittsburgh. Obviously that historic win over New England in the Open Cup at New England as well. Then they backed it up with that win over Birmingham, a team they played and beat in the playoffs a season ago. Big game tonight, but then of course everyone's looking forward to the game at home against Columbus in the Open Cup, Corey. Yeah, and I think this, the confidence from those two wins, I've brought it into this game and they've done well in the first half, first 45, to be able to maybe now take the players that you need for the Wednesday game and focus on Columbus. Obviously not yet, still have 45 minutes to go, but it's a good start for them this half. Birmingham Legion, of course, the other team that made the round of 16 in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Of course, Pittsburgh's playing good. You gotta look good, though, as well. We'll take a look here at Pittsburgh's alternate jerseys that'll be available for their fans during the summer. Great to see that coming up in the summer as far as the kit game for Pittsburgh. Of course, great story with Anders Bordoy, a local product from New Kensington, Pennsylvania, was signed to the USL Academy team for Pittsburgh back in March. He's made an impact in the Open Cup, and we get to throw to his story now and his run with the Riverhounds. My name is Anders Bordoy. I've been with the Riverhounds Academy for nine years, and I've just signed a USL Academy contract with the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. It's almost like a dream come true because I came here as a kid, I'd come onto the field after and get autographs from the players and like now the fact that I could be one of those players that's signing autographs for younger kids that were almost like me in a sense, it's, it's obviously crazy and I'm genuinely grateful for this opportunity because it's going to help improve my abilities and the way I think and just helping me mature as a person and player. Obviously, I'd come to games and I'd see these pro players and I'd be like, I want to be here too. And then when Wyatt Borso signed a couple years ago, he 
he was a young teenager and that, that kind of opened my eyes and realized that I can do this too. If someone else can my age can do this, I can come and do it as well. And especially since he was in the same club and I felt that that was now my goal. So playing for the Riverhounds Academy, I've always, they've always implemented technical abilities and becoming a technical player is extremely important in, in the professional game and any parts of the aspect of a soccer game because being technical, you're able to get out of more situations and you're able to almost think faster and you're able to carry out things that are going through your head. And I just feel like the academy has really helped me develop that aspect of my game. In being in the ECNL, it's an extremely high level and it scouts watching you, coaches watching you all the time and it helps you get used to the pressure of playing soccer and then you're kind of just able to be more calm when you come in those high pressure situations and more confident in your abilities. I hope the academy kids can realize that I was in the same position as them a couple years ago. I just feel like it's great to have somebody to look up to and know that they came from a very similar position as you and that they can do it as well. Because if I can do it, I'm a kid from Pittsburgh, there are other kids from Pittsburgh. And if I can do it, they 100% can as well. They just have to put in the work and I hope that they can look at me and realize that. Well, great story there from the bottom to the top for Pittsburgh. Riverhounds lead 2-0 at the half. More to come from Highmark coming up next. We all have goals. But let's be honest. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league. The USL Super League. Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? We all have goals. But let's be honest. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. I can't wait to get to the Museum of Play. I will defeat the dreaded Donkey Kong, crush everyone in foosball, build an impenetrable dream house, explore the butterfly garden, uh, mightily conquer the dance lab, and when all are vanquished, you know I'd really like to see the fairy tale forest puppet show, because it's kind of my jam. To the museum! With so much to do and see, everyone loves the strong National Museum of Play in Rochester, New York. Sean and Corey back here with you at the half. Pittsburgh in front of Las Vegas by two Edward Kizza goals to nil. Big 45 minutes coming up for both teams. We jump into news and notes from around the USL Championship. Of course, the USL Super League announces its initial markets tend to start in August of 2024. Great to see that. But of course, Orange County knocking off Sac Republic from the ranks of the unbeaten. And of course, the Open Cup. We've already talked plenty about it. Pittsburgh. Birmingham Legion tune in for that. They're looking to continue their great cup runs. Let's look at the scoreboard from around the league, Corey. We talked about Orange County, but Charleston getting a big win over Monterey Bay earlier today. Yeah, huge bounce back from that 7-0 spanking in that San Antonio game. So that's good to get that confidence back. But Memphis now getting some wins under their belt. You'll see them start creeping up the table, hopefully. And Hartford 
finally winning a game one nothing. Hopefully, can get those three points. Indy in front as well. Big games later on tonight and throughout the week. Orange County trying to back it up against Phoenix, Lou City, Tulsa. Always a big game. Or Sac Republic, Oakland. Good to watch that one as well. Yeah, I'll be on that game later, so I'm excited for that. Be a good game between two rival California teams. Hope the flight's good for you getting over there <laughs> for later on tonight. Pittsburgh here at Highmark are leading by two goals to nil. Highlights and stats are next. Ain't no better feeling than a cold one in my hand. That's why I'll be keeping Iron City in my plans. Oh, everywhere I roam, I'll be thinking about my home. Sitting pouring on the iron right before I go to rest. And when I'm laying in my bed, there's only one thing in my head. Just an ice cold can of Pittsburgh PA's best. It's Pride Night, Saturday, June 3rd at Highmark Stadium in Station Square. Join us for our first dollar beer night of the season. A halftime performance by X Pogo and professional soccer as the Pittsburgh Riverhounds host Phoenix. Enjoy live music and food and drink specials in the tailgate zone before the game. Blackstock gets this into the middle, flicked along and in! And who else but Albert Tequa? Tickets as low as $18. Get yours today at riverhounds.com slash tickets. Let's go, come on. I love a new color and a new game. I like to switch it up, you know, wherever my mood takes me. I'm always just doing me. And today, I'm me loving the PA Lottery. The games have become a part of me. They make me happy, they get me excited. And when I wanna try something new, I'll just go to another, and then another, and another. There's a lot of love for the Pennsylvania Lottery. And when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why. After I decided my pain was too much and my doctor actually suggested that I do visit the Good Feet store. Pretty amazing when they put the arch supports in your shoe and you walk around and you realize there's not pain and you think, how can this arch support in my shoe make my back pain go away? But it works. And how can it make my knee pain go away? It was incredible. Hip, knee, or back pain? See if arch supports can help you at the Good Feet store. Tonight's match is presented by Allegheny Health Network, the official medical provider of Pittsburgh Riverhounds SC. Sean St. Jacques, Corey Herzog back here with you. We're jumping in to the first half highlights here. 21st minute, it was Pittsburgh on the attack and Edward Kizza getting on the score sheet. And this is good by Kizza. You're in the right, you're forward, you're in the right spot at the right time. Fortunately for him, it comes right to him and it can't ask for an easier finish for your first goal in the league. Perfect position to score, like you said, his first goal this season in the USL Championship. 26th minute, Vegas tried to respond. And these are the chances that Vegas eventually need to finish if they want to put some wins in that win column. Get them on target, get your rebounds, get your chances, and hopefully one of them will go in. That chance from Ledesma goes wide. And then 10 minutes after he scored his first goal in the league, Edward Kizza scored his second. And the, like I said, Forbes' layback here is perfect. Great timing, great header. And when everything's clicking, this is what's going to happen. A good 2-0 lead for Pittsburgh. A brace for Kizza. Pittsburgh in control at the half. As we're about to start half number two here at Highmark. Teams will switch sides to start this second half. Vegas did make a couple of halftime alterations. We'll get to that in a second. Pittsburgh leading by two goals to nil. Kick us off going from right to left in their black and yellows to start the second half. Two goals for Edward Kizza, two goals for Pittsburgh. A mountain to climb for Vegas on the road in the second half. And I'm going to say it now, as a forward, you know you want that hat trick and Kizza is on two goals. And as a forward that's never scored a hat trick in the league, it's important. Not important, but you know he's going to want that, and hopefully Lily lets him be able to play a couple minutes here and get that hat trick for himself. With all the goals you scored, never a hat trick, huh? Nope. No, wow. the third one was always the toughest. Mm. I did score a hat trick in New Mexico when I played for Reno. Two weeks later, they took a goal away from me. Oh. So I thought I had my first hat trick, but that's brutal. It, two weeks later, <laughs> took it away. <laughs> that is brutal. Like we said, two halftime changes for Isidro Sanchez's group. Preston Tabor de Taka and Timothy Zali both came on. Andres Jimenez and Kubo Torres, who was dealing with a bit of a bloody 
nose or something at least in the first half. He got elbowed. He comes out as well. So two halftime alterations there for Vegas. And we'll see how that impacts the second half in a game that Coach Sanchez's group needs to get to if they're going to get a result. And right now, as you can see, it looks like Vegas maybe went to a three back with Carroll now sitting in the middle with the two other defenders outside. So it looks like maybe a 3-5-2 here. I'm not sure exactly until we get a good look at when they have the ball. Failing at a good half for Pittsburgh. Carlton trying to get a little fancy with it, gives it away. Griffin hooking it into no man's land. And Vegas does reset with those five at the back that you mentioned, Corey. Yeah, it's looking like a 3-5-2. Hopefully trying to get more attack, get those chances, and hopefully get one back, and then eventually maybe claw back into a 2-2 game. But the next goal is very important. If Vegas score, they're going to believe that they can come back. They've already tied San Antonio away. Plenty of games, so they, they know they can do it. It's just finishing those chances and getting those shots on target. Carlton and Ledesma came the closest for Vegas in the first half. But no one's been able to get through Jamali Waite yet in a white shirt. Pittsburgh could have had three or four in the first half. Huge opportunities for Griffin and Dequa went to the wayside, but Edward Kiz is two. His first two in the league this season have Pittsburgh in front. Kiz is brought down there, and it's a Pittsburgh free kick. Forbes was trying to take it quickly there. Not able to do so. Vegas trying to pick up their first win of the season. They're the only team left in the USL Championship that hasn't won this year. Again, those five road draws have kept them in the mix in the Western Conference in these early months of the season. But a win would do them the world of good. The only tough part is that Pittsburgh have run them ragged at times in this game. And that could continue here. Bounced in behind Griffin. He's able to get to the spot first. It's headed down for Dequa. Vegas didn't deal with that. It's crossed into the middle. It's headed out of play. It's a corner kick. And Vegas at sixes and sevens here at the back. Yeah, Vegas just not looking like they're gelling together as a team. We're fortunate they didn't give up anything there. But big set piece here by Pittsburgh. And hopefully Vegas can defend it well. Correct me if I'm wrong, Corey, almost a lack of communication a little bit there at the back. Griffin wins the ball among two very tall and big defenders around him. And then Deco had plenty of time to create a chance. Yeah, it looks like they're just expecting the other person to do what maybe they should be doing. Ball in from Forbes, it's headed in, it's a goal! It's a thumping header from Arturo Ordonez. Pittsburgh roaring here at Highmark. They lead by three goals to nil. First goal of the season for Arturo Ordonez. And they are in front by three here in Pittsburgh. And that's what you want to see your defender doing, not bicycle kicks on the top of the 18. Heading the ball down, getting big, getting, getting the power behind the header, and it's a great header. I mean, I don't think you can ask for an easier finish, but it's a great run, great reaction to the ball, like we were saying all game. Vegas just aren't finding those 50-50 balls that Pittsburgh are, and it's going their way tonight. And this could get ugly for the Vegas tonight. Tried to overhead kick earlier. Used his head that time to perfection. And Isidro Sanchez's group five minutes into the start of the second half concedes again. Pittsburgh are roaring now, up by three goals to nil. Vegas are in a world of trouble here if they're going to get something from this game. And it was the initial defensive lapse from Vegas that led to the corner. And give Arturo Ordonez a lot of credit, but he was wide open there at the near post. And there was nobody there for Vegas to mark him. Yeah, and that's where coaches get a little frustrated. That corner could have easily been not where it needed to be. Could have headed it back to the keeper. Could have been dealt with way before it happened. So unfortunate for Vegas, they do score off that corner that could have been avoided. But as you're gonna see, there's gonna be, every player on Pittsburgh is gonna be bleeding with confidence right now. Lash was able to step in defensively there. 
Tello Faz. Can he lead Vegas back into this game? Carlton on the overlap. Great step defensively by Arturo Ordonez. He's doing it all at the moment for Pittsburgh. And he gives the ball away there and concedes a free kick just after I give him a bunch of praise. <laughs> commentator's curse <laughs> but you can see it's the wrong decision from the forward you should have brought the ball out recycle it get your players involved unfortunately he puts Carlton in a tough spot maybe he can get out of it but it's a very tough spot for Carlton to deal with it's a great run to just tr attract the player but recycle the ball and get your confidence over here can Vegas find some life here on the road trailing three goals to nil the short stance. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly staying focused. Ball was flicked into the penalty area. Etu deals with it for Pittsburgh. Certainly a way back in for Vegas is to get some set piece opportunities. That ball might be a little wet as it trickles out of play. Might play. head into the river. Playing there for two years, that's when the crowd got the loudest when it went over that fence into those train <laughs> tracks. The fans there love that. Pittsburgh does deal with the initial attack from the set piece and Vegas will try and recycle it. This is Zali. Ooh, was that handled by Dequa? Yes, it was. And you can tell by the way he reacted to that that it stung him on the arm. It's a free kick for the lights. They take it quickly as well. Pittsburgh do have enough men behind the ball to deal with it. It's a good hold up play from Dequa. Nearly gave that away. Pittsburgh gets another good ricochet in their direction, and it's a goal kick. And they can reset as Blackstock did his job defensively. As a defender, you hate when a forward lays it back that soft because you know it's a 50-50 challenge. Well done by Blackstock to get into the tackle and win the ball, and luckily got a goal kick. Tabori Taka trying to help out. A substitute. He might be able to get on the end of this, but Blackstock does well to shield him. And he wins a free kick. Preston Tabor Itaka overzealous there after he was beaten to it. It's really good work from Langston Blackstock. He's had a good game so far tonight for Pittsburgh. And Bob Lilly's group have a free kick. And you can just tell that the forwards on Vegas are just frustrated, trying to get into the game, trying to get on the ball as much as possible. We saw it in the first half with a silly foul on the defender, and right again here. Just a forward going through the back. No need for him to go through the back because he is facing his own goal. Two goals from Edward Kizza and a thumping header from Arturo Ordonez. And Pittsburgh in very good shape here. Start of the second half, leading by three goals to nil. And Vegas' first trip to Pittsburgh has certainly not gone their way so far tonight. Bob Lilly said it, we don't want to let them off the hook. Certainly some of the Pittsburgh players will remember when they went to Vegas and lost last season. I'm sure that was certainly on multiple players' brains in the lead up to this game. And they've certainly played like it and they've been more than up to the task so far tonight. Griffin, lovely ball over the top. Nearly into the path of Dequa. Leo Diaz reads it and collects. It's well done by the keeper there to come out high on his line, read the ball. Good play. Donez just did that down for Patello Faz to reset. Here's Ledesma for Vegas. Doesn't have a ton of options, and in the end, essentially passed it to his manager, out of play for a throw. And that's just how Vegas's game has been going today. Not many options, not sure what they want to do on the ball. They're just hoping that somebody when they give the ball, they're expecting them to do it all. It's not how it's going to work. Pittsburgh, when they play a ball, they have two or three options to go. Unfortunately for Vegas, they just need to get that fluidity going and hopefully get some confidence and get a goal. Don't miss a minute of the action in 2023. Whether your club is on the road or at home, catch nearly every second of the USL Championship action on ESPN Plus, the home of the USL, La Liga, the Bundesliga, UFC, and more. Sign up today at plus.espn.com. Sean St. Jacques, Corey Herzog here with you. ESPN Plus, it's been a 
Great night so far for the River Hounds. Not so much for Vegas yet. There have been signs at times for the lights, but can they turn those moments into goals and get back into the game? Here's Carlton. It's a lovely ball into the penalty area. Ledesma poking it into the center of the penalty area. In the end, it's a good step defensively for Pittsburgh. Out of play, it goes for a throw. It's a Vegas throw on the near side here. Although, Santos is a bit slow to continue. He might have a bit of a bloody nose here. Inside of his hand looks to be red. There's been a few acts like that in this game tonight. We saw Kubo Torres have to go off at halftime for something similar. Yeah, not sure what happened there. Didn't see much like Torres in the first half. Junioretu made a nice step defensively there for Pittsburgh that snuffed out the latest Vegas chance. Pittsburgh will play a man light here while the throw-in is taken for Vegas. Just thrown in by Stauffer. Does have two goals to his name this season. Carroll. And to get to the byline, two river hounds on him, and it's a corner for Vegas. And if you're Vegas and you want to get back into the game, a set piece goal will be huge here, just like Pittsburgh. And I don't know if the ref's going to let him come in, but there's a big center back out for Pittsburgh right now. Oh, as he comes back in. Right on cue, Dos Santos rejoins us. Ledesma swings in the corner, and it's well read by Jamali Waite. Easy enough for the Riverhounds defensively. Well, it's flicked on, although the offside flag is up against Ledesma here. Or maybe it was off against Pittsburgh, beg your pardon, on the other end of the pitch. Free kick for the visitors. Stauffer down the line. Tebori Taka, not the best touch. Donez snuffs it out. Lovely flick from Griffin and Kizza is twist turned around by Zali, the substitute, who sees yellow. A smart foul if he's in there. It's a two on two with Dequa and Kiza running at you. Smart professional foul. But you can see every flick, everything's happening for Pittsburgh right now. Two goals from Kiza. One goal as well from Arturo Ordonez. And Zali came on as a sub, quickly sees a yellow card. And Vegas just have not quite been able to sustain any bit of play that they've had tonight. Again, few positives. We've seen some good flashes from them. But then Pittsburgh is quickly off them back down after that. As we approach the hour mark, at high mark. Carroll resets. You can see Pittsburgh not pressing as high, saving their energy maybe for Wednesday. Maybe with that 3 nothing lead, they're laying back a little bit, conserving their energy. As you see, they're in the, all in their own half right now. But as Bob Lilly, as I played against them many of times, when you get a lead, you're not gonna, it's gonna be tough to find the goals. Just about to say, Pittsburgh with the lead could make some subs as well to save some legs for the Columbus game. And two players are getting ready to come on. We'll get to that in a second with 30 minutes remaining here. Pittsburgh are on the attack again. Griffin, Kizza, who's on, I beg your pardon, Forbes. Forbes. Deflects through for Griffin, who smashes it in. Flag stays down. Danny Griffin is on the score sheet again for Pittsburgh. In the league this time, the man who won it in New England for the Riverhounds in the Open Cup, scores his first league goal in his return to the Riverhounds. Pittsburgh lead by four goals to nil, and they are well on their way to three points here in the Steel City tonight.
And like we've been saying, all the balls, all the bounces have been going Pittsburgh's way. Unfortunate right there, maybe in an offsides position, but you're gonna give him that chance. He's gonna finish it. And now it's four nothing Pittsburgh, getting their subs in, getting ready for Wednesday's game against Columbus. I think he thought he was offsides too, surprising. Vegas is readying a sub as well. Was that last little flick towards him, I think, that may have put him in an offside position, but the assistant kept his flag down and Pittsburgh are in complete control now. You see the subs are coming on. Trevor Svetslut is gonna come on for Albert Dequa. Tola Shoanmi comes on for Junior Etu. Looks like Issa Ryan has come on for Vegas for that other sub. And that's where we stand after Danny Griffin does score yet again. Scored in the Open Cup, a historic goal in New England, in Foxborough. And now he does it again in the league this time. Three different goal scorers, three first time goal scorers in the league this season for the Riverhounds. Just the way Bob Lilly would have hoped it would go, to, it would go tonight. As you see there, Issa Ryan did come on for Vegas. And Jordan Ayambila made way. Mike's Beer Bar is the official watch party location of the Pittsburgh Riverhounds SC. Meet me at Mike's. It'll be interesting now with that 4-0 lead. Does Lily maybe take out Forbes? A little on the older side. Played all night tonight. He's played well. Maybe get him a little bit of extra rest coming into Wednesday's game against Columbus. Bob Lilly does have four outfield players on his bench. Michael DeShields, who played in the Open Cup game against New England. Luke Biasi is available. Robbie Mertz as well. So Marky Barra in there as well. So we'll see. Like you said, Corey, certainly some options if Bob Lilly wants to rest a few guys. The Vegas want to get back into the game. Ball through from Ledesma is good. But in the end, it is well shepherded by Arturo Ordonez. It's a goal kick. <laughs> Trying to find Lucas Stoffer on the run in behind. And he scored twice this year for Vegas, two of their nine as a team. That's been about it tonight. Just half and quarter chances, not enough to beat that man in his goal, Jamali Waite. I had to say this earlier, but another issue for Vegas has been keeping clean sheets far away from that tonight. Just the one clean sheet this season for Vegas. It's the second fewest, tied for the second fewest in the league this season. And Pittsburgh ended that dream in the 21st minute through that man, Edward Kizza. And you're going against a team that loves keeping clean sheets with Bob Lilly's enforcements in the back. He just does well with those. And clean sheets win your games. Failing. Pittsburgh trying to add on now. Griffin gets to the byline. Tries to cross it. Carlton clears it. And it's out for a throw. Well, Bob Lilly's boys are sitting pretty right now. Two goals in the first half in 10 minutes. Two goals in 11 minutes in the second half. Like, we, like I said, when we were younger, goals come in pairs. Unfortunate for Vegas, both of them come from Pittsburgh. And the Bob Lilly blueprint tonight has been executed perfectly so far. From a Pittsburgh perspective, especially with Columbus coming in midweek, a huge Open Cup game. It's exactly what Bob Lilly would have wanted. Still 25 minutes left to finish this off, of course. They are in a very strong position now, Pittsburgh. And looking to add on to that, Forbes from the set piece. In by Forbes, headed on. Ordonez looking for another goal. It misses the target this time. And like we said, Pittsburgh just finding those 50-50 balls. Vegas not really marking anybody in the box, hoping that the other guy maybe is going up for it. And as you see, nobody challenged him for the ball. Show on me. Puts on the pressure. Vegas 
do clear it. <laughs> Want to watch the action from on the field here at Highmark Stadium? If so, make sure to call 412-865-GOLD to receive the icy light corner kick sweep today. Great crowd here at Highmark as always. They've been treated to a phenomenal performance from the Riverhounds tonight. Three different goal scorers, all scoring their first goals in the league this season. Kizza has two of them. Here's Shawanmi, played really well against New England in the Open Cup. Now Forbes, sliding it through. Kizza's on a hat trick, but he finds Shawanmi, and it's 5 0. But the flag does go up here, it looks like, against Shawanmi. Not going to count. Could have been a fifth for Pittsburgh. A little anxious from the forward there, trying to get in there a little early. Forbes plays a great ball, great pass across the net, but unfortunate, just a little excited on that run and just one, two yards offside. And just to be clear, it looks like it's Kizza actually who gets penalized, not show on me. Cross was good, but Kizza was already in an offside position. Maybe a bit of a makeup after Griffin maybe was a bit offside on the goal. Uh, yeah, I agree with that one. <laughs> In the end, Pittsburgh can reset with a goal kick. Lovely play again. It was unselfish from Kizza, but the flag had already gone up. It does look like Vegas is getting ready another substitution here. Get to that in a moment. Can Vegas find any spark here to get back into the game? Being told it's going to be Danny Rios who's going to come on for the lights. Carlton. See there, Rios in the bottom part of your screen briefly. If it stays like this, it's going to be a second road defeat of the season for Vegas. They would stay where they currently are at the bottom of the table on just six points, five of them coming on the road. Again, certainly not out of it because of those road draws they picked up, but this is certainly a result that could set them back. Although again, they've come across a Pittsburgh team that's in tremendous form, and that has continued so far tonight. Told it's a sellout officially here at Highmark. 51 39 for the Riverhounds here tonight. They've been great as always. They've been treated to another great performance from Pittsburgh. You know how great it is to play here, Corey. And once again, the fans, just like the team, have delivered again tonight. Yeah, playing there two years is you just get, they have that culture where it's players and fans are together as one. And you can see it. You can just see the fans wanting to win, wanting to win with the players. And it's going to be an exciting game on Wednesday for them to have Columbus come to their stadium. Hopefully can get into the round of eight, but just a huge game to have on your stadium. And the fans are going to show up for sure on that one. And I'm excited to watch. I wonder what the number is going to be on Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Tune into that one. Columbus are in town, a black and yellow derby, if you will with a place in the quarterfinals of the Open Cup up for grabs. And that Vegas sub did happen. And Danny Rios came on. And Emmanuel Ledesma had that yellow card early as well in the second minute of the match. Played well with that hanging over his head, but wasn't able to find the back of the net with the chances he was given. And his night ends here. And you can see the game slowing down now a little bit. Pittsburgh taking the foot off the pedal a little bit, just keeping the ball, happy with Vegas keeping it back there. I will say we were peeking at some scores from around the league. The one that you know you and I keep looking back at, Detroit City leading San Antonio at the half by a goal to nil. Let's talk about Eastern Conference picture. That could totally change things if Detroit City could pick up points against the champions, no less. See if that score holds up. And meanwhile, Pittsburgh will bring on a couple more here. Robbie Mertz, local 
product is going to come on. That's going to be it for Canardo Forbes. And Mark Ibarra is going to come on. And the goal scorer, Danny Griffin, is going to come off. You can see those are Wednesday subs right there. Getting your players rested, getting them ready for Wednesday. Have a good relax. 4 nothing. right now is a good win for Pittsburgh right now. Yeah, Bob Lilly and Danny Griffin, all smiles. Good performances as always from those two. 93 consecutive pro appearances for Danny Griffin since becoming a pro back in 2020. It's just a remarkable statistic. It's a great statistic. Just a stone like we were saying earlier. Just a rock in that midfield that you know he's going to show up every game. You know, I don't want to knock on wood here. He's not injured. He probably takes care of his body on and off the field. He's just one of those players that you can just count on every day, day in and day out for 90 minutes. Him and Robbie Mertz have had a similar tale these last couple of years. They went to next pro sides, at least MLS affiliated sides. Didn't quite work out for them. They come back and boy, is Bob Lilly and his staff happy they both did. It's as if they never left those two. And two very good players in the midfield that are gonna get you assists, gonna get you chances, and most importantly, work their butt off every night. And in Danny Griffin's case, they don't miss games either. Here's Mertz off the takeaway by Dos Santos, in for Kizza. Good step defensively by Laj. It's out for a throw in as Kizza is looking for his hat trick. And they don't come often, so I'm excited for him. Hopefully he can get that hat trick. Hopefully get that stat on his under his belt. And again, hadn't scored in the league <laughs> this season. <laughs> Could get a hat trick tonight. We'll see. Still time for him. Dequa had one earlier, and I don't remember many times where two forwards in one year can get a hat trick. So that's a good stat if they could be able to pick that up. That's the other thing, too. You told Bob Lilly before the game, your team's going to score four goals, and Albert Dequa isn't going to score any of them. I don't think he would have believed you, yeah. yet here we are. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would have believed him either. But that just shows you how dangerous Pittsburgh is with everybody being able to do everything on the field. Anybody can score at any moment on the field. Good performance so far tonight from Langston Blackstock as well. Gets the ball rolling here. Failing back for Ibarra. Had a great performance against New England in the Open Cup as well. Dos Santos trying to head it back forward. Carlton steps in. Trying to reset for Vegas. Stoffer. Flare it down the line for Tabor Taka. And it's a miscue from Dos Santos. A Vegas corner is upcoming. Definitely added a couple more stands since I've been there eight, nine oh, years yeah? ago. Yeah, it wasn't that big, but that just explains how much growth has been in Pittsburgh, and it looks, I'm happy to be able to say that I played two years there with those remarkable fans. From the corner, it is headed centrally. Crucial touch from Mertz. Tabor Itaka, good ball across. It is touched out of trouble, not definitively cleared. Oh, it is blocked. Ibarra on the edge of the penalty area. It's lofted back in. Easy enough for Jamali Waite and Pittsburgh able to survive a flurry there from Las Vegas, one we haven't seen in quite a few minutes. And that's the difference between Pittsburgh and Las Vegas. It's a great cross in, but there's no runners. Nobody's going towards the ball. What happened in the first half when Pittsburgh put in a cross, uh, they were able to find their defenders, beat their defenders to the ball, and able to get a header into the, actually two headers, one off a corner, one off a cross. That's the difference of the game right now. Controlled here by Shawanmi. His pass is picked off, but Blackstock wins it back for the Riverhounds. Langston Blackstock into the penalty area. Just under 15 minutes of the 90 left. Crosses it into the middle, and it is caught by Diaz. Select the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit www.selectsportamerica.com for the latest select product specials and more. Select the player's choice. St. Jacques, Corey Herzog here with you. It's been all Pittsburgh tonight. 
Vegas have had a few sniffs at it, but just haven't been as clinical as Pittsburgh has been tonight, and it's been the difference in the game. Diego Di Taka, the substitute, trying to change something here for Vegas, but he's snuffed out by Dos Santos and Blackstock. Raj tries to reset the play for Vegas, and Carroll is forced back. Vegas schedule doesn't get easy after tonight. They've got to go to Phoenix next, which is just another really tough place to go. Even when Phoenix have been a little rocky at times, these well, last season and a half, you could say, still difficult to go there and get a result. Then they have to host Monterey Bay, then three straight on the road in the middle of June, El Paso, Widener Field to play the switchbacks, and then as if it wasn't tough enough already, they gotta go to Lynn Family and take on Lou City. So it's not gonna get any easier, and it's certainly not gonna get any easier on the road for Vegas. And tonight is just goes to show that, yeah, you can get points on the road, but the league is gonna catch up to you at times when you're away from home. And they've got a couple of huge fortresses in the league to go play at next after not being able to potentially pick up points here tonight at another. Yeah, and those are tough places to go, but like we said before, they have done it five times. More defending for them to do here. Failing for Mertz. It was brought down. Referee sees nothing wrong with it. Failing continues to keep possession. Dos Santos. Blackstock, just look like DeShields is gonna join us in a minute here for Pittsburgh. Diaz comes way off his line here and just smashes it out of play. You gotta love that as a Pittsburgh fan, your forward in the 78th minute, four nothing up, making that 40 yard sprint just to have the goalie kick it out of bounds and win a throw in for you. Michael DeShields is on. Arturo Ordonez, the goal scorer, departs. Good performance all the way around for Arturo Ordonez. I believe that is the fifth sub for Bob Lilly. Throwing up coming here for the Riverhounds. Good chest control from Mertz. Rare miscue from Blackstock tonight. Out of play in front of Bob Lilly for a throw. A little lackadaisical there when you're up 4 nothing, but still had a very good game on this left side. Created the first goal in the first 15, 20 minutes. Taking on his defender, getting a cross in. Maybe not the best cross, but you're not going to score goals if you don't get the crosses or shots in, so he's done well there. Vegas have a free kick. Just over 10 minutes of the 90 to go. Brace for Kizza. Turner Ordonez off another Canardo Forbes assist, by the way, on that third goal. And Danny Griffin adds a fourth. That's where we stand at the moment. We kick here for Carlton to take. It's a good ball whipped in. It is flicked on, but to nobody in particular. And it goes out of play for a goal kick. Cardo Forbes, the all-time assist leader in USL championship history, and again turned 35 earlier this week. He adds another onto his tally. That's one thing you're always going to get from Forbes is obviously his assist, but his leadership, his calmness on the ball, his calmness in the midfield, to be able to sometimes just stand on the ball, keep the ball for your team, because when you have the ball, that's when you get to relax, you get to play, let the other team chase, and he's done well tonight. Got his assists like always. And he's played well. USL on ESPN continues as the summer heats up. Memphis 901 FC and Aaron Malloy head to the Valley of the Sun. Thanks, Manuel Artiaga and Phoenix Rising FC. It's Phoenix Rising 
and Memphis 901, Saturday, July 1st, 11 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Talked about it at halftime. Memphis are starting to pick it up a little bit again. Phoenix look improved from last year's side as well under Juan Guerra. Also two to definitely watch this season, one from the east and one from the west. Now once you get, like we were saying with Vegas, once you get that first win, that first goal brings a little confidence and you get your little run going there. So unfortunately tonight, I don't think Vegas is gonna come back from four nothing down, but they just need to stay confident and be able to play like they want. Fallon a free kick, Pittsburgh Get a set piece out of this. We're gonna put it beyond a reasonable doubt here in the final minutes. This is certainly within Robbie Mertz's range to go for goal here. Certainly plenty to aim at as well inside the penalty area. Edward Kizza is on a hat trick. But Mertz has some miscommunication with Burke failing and the sequence breaks down there. Yeah, they'll need to work on something different maybe on Wednesday for Columbus on that free kick. It's the only foot wrong that Pittsburgh's put tonight. Haven't been many others. Chance here for Vegas. Can they get on the score sheet here? Tibor Taka, ball into the middle. It's cut out by Hogan. He steps in nicely. Patello Faz was in the area, but it didn't get to him. And the lights will reset. And if you're Pittsburgh, you just want to get through these next 10, 12 minutes of no injuries, nothing stupid. Just getting through these next 10, 12 minutes and then get on to training and get ready for Wednesday. One of the things that Bob Lilly did mention to us that's worth bringing up, again, they have that Columbus game, which is going to be a huge moment for the club coming up midweek. So what helps us is that these two games are at home. You get the Vegas game here. Columbus comes into town on the 24th. Then they have their shortest road trip of the season after that. They go to Loudoun next. So that's going to help us a little bit as far as resting some guys, making sure no one gets too overworked. And then when June comes around, they have two home games, Phoenix and then Charleston. Two big games, of course, but both are home games. So it is a congested schedule for Bob Lilly's group, but one that because of a lot of home games being mixed in, they can manage it a little bit more. Yeah, and it's, it's huge that they're playing home this weekend because if you're playing away, you got your travel day on Sunday, then you got your recovery day Monday, not much time to get ready for Wednesday. So right now, they can, now they have an extra day with not traveling on Sunday and be able to focus right away on Columbus on Wednesday. it holds, of course. Bob Lilly's group would pick up their fourth league win of the season. They have five draws as well, Pittsburgh. This campaign get up to 17 points as well. And in the live table, that would move them up to fourth in the Eastern Conference. Pending other results, of course, later on tonight and throughout the week, of course. That's roughly where Bob Lilly's team wants to end up in that top four home playoff game that always gives teams a good chance of making a deep run. Last year's any indication, it was the two top seeds that made it to the final. Shot does come in here, Jamali Waite makes a good save. First time he's really been called upon tonight. It was a vicious strike from outside of the penalty area. It's ricocheted out for a Vegas corner. And if you're Vegas, that's what you want to see. Shots on target. But, like we were saying, Way, he's old, he hasn't been in the game for, what, 85 minutes and comes up with a huge save. You know it's 4 nothing, but he's still focused and ready for anything that's coming at him. The substitute, Issa Ryan, gets that shot on target. Carlton with the corner. Volley deflected and in! Goal! Vegas do get on the board with four and a half minutes left. It's a bit unlucky for Pittsburgh. In the end, takes a wild ricochet on the way through. And it's 4-1. Frustrating for Pittsburgh, but if you're Vegas, that's what you want to see. One of those goals go in. Doesn't matter how it goes in. 
you've broke the barrier and now you got your goal. Hopefully they can build off that, maybe get one more, but you know that you can get a goal, get some confidence going, and hopefully it can change a little bit going into next week for them. We're still trying to figure out who got the final touch. Marcelo Lage was in the area. The way that Pittsburgh's gotten some lucky bounces at times tonight, at least fortunate bounces. I think Vegas won't be too shy to accept the gift. But some positivity for Isidro Sanchez's side right at the end, but to be fair, it is nothing more than a consolation on the night. And I think Vegas will take it right now, just yeah. with the confidence, getting in behind and just trying to finish those chances. Another good ball in from Tabor Itaka as Pittsburgh now are looking around at the back as Vegas try to finish this off strong here in the final minutes. Vegas needed this a little bit earlier in the game. Stauffer will take the throw again with three minutes of the 90 left. Well, I will say a goal here would make it a little bit more interesting. At the end, Dos Santos heads and then clears as it was headed back down. by Bushu was sent forward looking for Kizza. It's cut out, Carlton wins it back. And in the end, it's a good step by Trevor Svetslu. In the end, it's out for a Pittsburgh throw. Did you know Kizza wanted that ball in behind there to be able to get his hat trick? Unfortunate, couldn't get it over the defender, but right idea, unfortunate, just not to get it over. Well, if it was Marcelo Lash, again, we're still waiting confirmation on about the final touch, it would be his first goal of the season, continuing the theme of first-time league goal scorers tonight. But again, we are still waiting to get confirmation. Then we just did, at least on our press box feed, that it is Lodge who got the final touch. So that is his first goal of the campaign. As Vegas make another change here, Tyler Bagley comes in for the goal scorer, Lodge. Decent last touch of the ball there. A minute and a half of the 90 left. Kizza trying to get onto it. He's on a hat trick. Not quite able to do so. Tabori Taka trying to get Vegas to finish this game on the right foot. That's a foul and a free kick for the lights. Lodge is hurt over there on the sideline. Hopefully nothing serious. That look, looks to be why he came off. And Vegas, a lot brighter here at the end of the game. Ryan for Bagley, cut out by DeShields. It's a goal kick. And that's where you just need to get into that tackle. Hopefully get there, a little topo around. If you can get there before the defender, it's a penalty. Again, it was tough for us to see initially, but this was the redirect from Lodge. It's actually a brilliant header. Not sure how much he knew about it, but he's able to redirect it into the back of the net. Fair play to the defender, his first goal of the season. It was in such a tight space. We weren't entirely sure initially, but it is his goal. And now Kizza for the hat trick. Just squeezes it wide of the goal. What a chance. That was his chance to get the hat trick. Unfortunate not to be able to get it on target. Maybe take another touch with his speed. I think he can beat the defender there, put it far post, but still a good chance. And he's he's itching for that third goal, and I am too for him. Three added minutes at the end of this one here in Pittsburgh. Three minutes away from three big points for the Riverhounds. Barring a miraculous comeback here, I will say Vegas have been a lot brighter at the end here, as Jamali Waite does get up highest above Tabori Taka. It did take some time for the substitutions to make an impact for Vegas in this second half, but in the end, it's going to be too little, too late for Cedro Sanchez's group. But again, really, got to go back to the way Pittsburgh started the game, the way they carried that in to the second half, got to give them a lot of credit. Again, some people would say, well, will they look ahead to Columbus a little too much 
in this game, far from the case for the Riverhounds. More than earned these potential three points that are gonna come their way in two minutes. Two from Kizza. We'll each for Arturo Ordonez and Danny Griffin tonight. Marcelo Lage adding one for Vegas. And that just shows you what kind of team Pittsburgh is this year. They have a huge game on Wednesday. You're thinking maybe they come out not too worried about a, a winless team, winless team like Vegas to come in, maybe steal three points, but um, Pittsburgh definitely did their job tonight. 4-1 probably going to end up in a good victory for them tonight to focus on Wednesday. Saw their kids and nearly had the hat trick. Still might get the chance, although Mertz couldn't keep his footing. Nearly played Kiz in behind once more. Issa Ryan, that's a lovely first touch. Failing is on him though in a flash. Ryan stays with it. Svetslut gets in there not once but twice to deal with it. Ibarra heads it back and Dos Santos clears with one minute left. It's headed centrally for show on me. And Tyler Bagley steps in. It's going to be brought back. It's going to be a yellow card for a show on me here. I'm sure Pittsburgh will be a little disappointed it's not a clean sheet, but a three goal victory against a team that's been tough to deal with when they go on the road this season. Certainly what Bob Lilly and his group were hoping for. And they do have Columbus coming up in just four days' time here in the Open Cup. It's going to be a really fun night for the Riverhounds, their entire organization, the fans as well. Again, Birmingham still in the Open Cup as well, so plenty of action for USL Championship teams in the Open Cup still to come. Tonight, it has been all Pittsburgh, and they win it by four goals to one over Las Vegas. Convincing pretty much from start to finish for the Riverhounds. In the end, Bob Lilly's group pick up their fourth win of the campaign. They get four goals on the night, and they take down Vegas here by the final score of four goals to one, Corey. Yeah, and you can see Pittsburgh from the opening kickoff was the more energy, wanted to win this game more, and it shows on the scoreboard, 4-1. Great win for Pittsburgh going into Wednesday's game against Columbus. Edward Kizza is our man of the match, presented by Heineken. Hadn't scored in the league going into the night. He scored twice tonight, Corey, and really got Pittsburgh off to the right start. And it just started with him being in the right place at the right time with an easy finish. That gives you so much confidence going in, and you can see it right there, good finish right there. That was the first of two. Again, Diaz would maybe want that one back. Basically presented it to Kizza. This was the better of the two goals. A lovely header to make it 2-0. Just a big, brave header. He saw the ball, saw the run, great timing, and that's what Pittsburgh did tonight, and he just easily headed that in. His first two goals of the season, our Heineken man of the match, helped Pittsburgh on their way. They win it by four goals to one. Highlights and stats to wrap things up next here at Highmark after the break. Jen, we see you juggling a hundred things at once and slowing down, taking in every moment together. We see you finding time for what's important and realizing when it's time, you don't have to go far. At AHN, we see you. It's Pride Night, Saturday, June 3rd at Highmark Stadium in Station Square. Join us for our first dollar beer night of the season. A halftime performance by Ex Pogo and professional soccer as the Pittsburgh Riverhounds host Phoenix. Enjoy live music and food and drink specials in the tailgate zone before the game. Blackstock gets this into the middle, flicked along and in! And who else but Albert Tequan? Tickets.
tickets as low as $18. Get yours today at riverhounds.com slash tickets. Lovely night in the Steel City for the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. They take down Las Vegas by four goals to one. Sean St. Jacques and the former Riverhound, Corey Herzog, back here with you to wrap it all up. Let's jump into the full-time match highlights from this one. Five goals in this one. We start with Edward Kissa's first goal of the regular season for the Riverhounds. And it's a good 1v1 take on here. Get the ball in the box. We'll get it to your scores. Unfortunately for the keeper, it goes right to Kizza, and it's an easy finish for his first goal of the season. Eddie on the spot for the Riverhounds gave them the lead inside of 22 minutes. He was far from done. Ten minutes later, he'd add a second. And this is good pass back from Forbes. All starts this. Forwards running their time, timing the runs. Great header. Keep it down. 2-0. Wouldn't be the last thumping header in this game, but that really was where Pittsburgh took control. That came moments after Vegas nearly equalized at the other end. And then from a corner, Mr. Assist gets another, and Arturo Ordonez adds a third. And you could just see Pittsburgh was always getting to the ball first on every battle. Great header down, great corner, 3 0 starting the half. And then this one, maybe a pinch of offside in it. Danny Griffin and company won't care. It's the fourth goal. And when you get a chance like this, don't look at the don't look at the referee. Finish it, then look at the referee. Didn't raise his flag. 4 0. And Pittsburgh was cruising from there. Goal in the open cup and a goal in the league in Danny Griffin's second stint with Pittsburgh. Vegas did get one at the end. It ends up being a lovely header from Marcelo Lage. Yeah, and this hopefully brings a little confidence into the team, getting that goal, breaking that barrier, and hopefully next week can get a couple more. And that's how it finished here at Highmark this evening. Four goals to one. Pittsburgh pick up their fourth win of the campaign. And Corey, your final thoughts as your former team is able to get all three points. Tough one for Vegas to take in the end. Yeah, tough one for Vegas. They've done well on the road. Unfortunately, Pittsburgh's just too big of a team, too hard place to go and get some points. And Pittsburgh showed them why they're the one of the 16 in Open Cup and was able to do it tonight. And now the Open Cup beckons for the Pittsburgh Riverhounds after a stellar performance tonight here in the Steel City. Pittsburgh get four goals from three different brand new goal scorers in the league this season and they take down Las Vegas by four goals to one behind a tremendous performance from Bob Lilly's group this evening. For Corey Herzog and our entire crew, I'm Sean St. Jacques saying so long from Pittsburgh. Big win for the Riverhounds. They beat Vegas by four goals to one. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the rest of your weekend. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.